Yeah, so I can give you the numbers and also an explanation for it. So first of all, we know that the classification of a person dying, those who were classified as COVID deaths were anybody who died within 28 days of a positive PCR test or who were um, you know, clinically diagnosed with COVID. But the key thing is almost all of them, it's within 28 days of a PCR test. And of course, that means if um, somebody, um, you know, happens to be uh, died in a road accident, you know, within uh, some time after they tested positive for COVID, then they'll be classified as a COVID death. And uh, dying doesn't matter what other um, morbidity led to their death. If they happen to have a PCR, positive PCR test, they'll be classified as a COVID death. So that's now, I mean, at the time, this wasn't well known. I think people mm. now, <laughs> that's something that people are now, uh, at least are, are kind mm. of like, well aware of, but how does that translate into this actual data? Well, there was this um, an interesting freedom information request made uh, at the end of the one, the most relevant one, which was the end of 2022, which looked to ask for the n the number of all COVID classified deaths and how many of those were in people who had uh, no other serious comorbidities and. At the time, I mean, you mentioned the figure of 170. I think the figure I saw was maybe for, for England, which was I think 135,000, mm. and and less than five, I think it was some, it was less than four and a half percent of those. Less than four and a half percent of those deaths were in were people who did not have some other serious comorbidity, right? So it's a very low percent. So in general. Um, you know, you can, you can, it's less than 5%. And of course, it's particularly, it's particularly interesting when you look at the data for young people. So for people under the age of 20, we now know from another freedom of information request that I believe, again, up until certainly up, it might be even a later period, but certainly the first, you know, sort of the first two years um, of the pandemic, it's something like, I believe it's only three people under the age of 20 without any other serious comorbidity have died. Mm. So when you hear this, when you talk about the risk of um, death from COVID to, to young people, well, there's something confusing about that as well, because people don't realise that you've got to make the difference between what's the probability of dying if you've got the disease as opposed to what's just what's the probability of you dying from it. So you've got, you know, there's a difference there. Um, mm. You... But even so, whichever way you look at it, when you get these numbers of 0 0.000, .000 these are really, these are, <laughs> these are really incredibly tiny uh, yeah. probabilities. There's, there's, there is essentially, when we say there's essentially no risk of young people, young healthy people dying of this disease. It's certainly, um, it's not non-existent, but it's, you know, it's, it's similar to, I think, probably less than flu for young people. I think more young people will die of, of, of flu than, than COVID. Mm. if they're healthy so what i think you know a lot of people still believe is that well over a hundred thousand people have died from covid when perhaps that's nowhere near the truth yeah i mean they've died with they died with covid rather than rather than from covid mm. i mean i i've used the analogy you could die wearing underwear but underwear didn't cause you to die Right. Well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of people early on who didn't like the fact that I was suggesting they think for themselves were saying to me, well, they might have had other morbidities, but if they didn't get COVID, they wouldn't have died. And I would say, well, how do you know that? Yeah, we don't know that. These are counterfactual questions. We don't know, but the data, what we know, you know, the kind of data and assets that we, we would like suggests that that wouldn't be that, 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 that wouldn't be the case. Um, I mean, it's interesting there. I noticed I, I was making a note in your introduction. You were talking about um, you were reminded you used the sort of the analogy of the song. It's Stevie Wonder song. There's another mm. analogy of, of, of a famous song here with the whole this whole point about COVID that once you, you know, you know, once you're, you're you've got you've been pos PCR positive PCR tested with COVID, you know, then for quite a long time afterwards, if you you, you know for whatever reason, if you happen to get hospitalised, you're still going to be called a COVID. You know, you're sort of a COVID case for sort of quite a long time. It reminds me of, sort of the Hotel California here. You know, <laughs> you can you can check out anytime you want, but you can never leave. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a good one. 
I mean, another analogy I used to try and suggest to people and say, look, if you look at the people that are getting ill and dying, they're either over the age of life expectancy anyway, or they've got other and often severe morbidities. And the analogy I would use and say, how many people die of the wind blowing? People that generally don't die of the wind blowing. And I said, what if you were walking along the edge of a cliff? Yeah. Would you That's say that analogy, yeah. if the wind blew you off, you know, would you say the wind killed you? Well, no, hitting the ground at a high speed would kill you. It's just the wind that blew you off because you were right on the edge anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know? But a lot of people got offended by me saying that. But Well, I think the, I mean, again, even the Office of National Statistics kind of like concede that the, um, a large, a very large proportion of those deaths in the, you know, in that early period of the of early spring of 2020 would likely those a lot of those people would likely have died within a, the a kind of a six month period anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think the average age was 82 point something. Early yeah, on. yeah, yes, yes, it was. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, and when you I say when you combine that with the fact that they were they were given inappropriate treatment. Mm. which likely speeded the deaths anyway, as well as the, the virus itself. You've got that combination of, of effects which led to that um, very high number of deaths now. Thanks for watching the Radical Health Rebel YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to share with your friends and family or share via your social media. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications of new video clips from the podcast. And if you want to watch the full episode, completely ad free plus premium content and join the Radical Health Rebel Patreon community, head on over to the Radical Health Rebel Patreon channel at www.patreon.com forward slash Radical Health Rebel. Thanks again for watching.